Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing okay. How are you? Pretty good. I felt myself like speaking too fast in that intro. Oh, yeah. I had, to, I had to put some extra space between some of those phrases at the end to make it line up with the music in the end. <laughs> to get it right. Yeah. yeah. I, and I'm only guessing at how the music is because I don't actually hear it while we're <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> recording this. That's um, funny. But I've gotten pretty good at lining it up at the timing. Yeah. Uh, but I, I definitely felt myself kind of racing through that intro. Oh, yeah. Um, well, they're getting some economic stimulus in Florida. Oh, right. <laughs> so right. That's, that's really the big news today, I think. Yeah, yeah. That somehow, I mean, they, between war and natural disasters, the, they really do have this country convinced that <laughs> destruction is economic stimulus. It's good for the economy. Yeah. Creative destruction. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which is said by people who obviously have no understanding of what that term is. Yeah, right. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Upgrades so. are creative destruction. <laughs> yeah, people. Right. yeah. Switching from analog to digital, that's creative destruction. Yeah. Just destruction that requires creation, that's not creative <laughs> destruction. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, but, yeah. you know, convince some people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there, there will be a bunch of money that goes there. There, that, that there will be. Um, um, uh, some people will make a lot of money, but on the whole, they're going to lose. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not. Yeah. that's Just remember, people, those are all resources that could have went somewhere else. Yeah. If like, they hadn't been required to rebuild. Yeah if, they, yeah. if they didn't have to rebuild everything. That could have been lowering home prices elsewhere. Yeah, exactly. So. I hate it for them, though. Like, yeah. I really do. Like, I, 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 that's one we dodged as far as I'm concerned because it could have easily have came here. Yeah. Um, well, none of the tracks were even close to coming here, though. I mean, they weren't, but, I mean, that's not that far away. Though. <laughs> like, I um, I actually feel I feel bad for Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, because I lived in Atlanta when a weak, weak storm came through. Yeah. Hurricane. After growing up on the coast. Yeah. And I was living in Atlanta when Opal came through. Yeah. Opal was barely a storm <laughs> by the time it got to Atlanta. Yeah. And I, we lost power for four days. Oh, And wow. it's just like they were completely unprepared to deal with that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, this thing, um, I mean, our buddy in Charlotte was messaging us today saying they're getting effects from it there. Yeah. Like he's going to have to, like, go buy a chainsaw. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a client in North Carolina. They're like, all right, get ready. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, yeah, yeah, it, it, sorry for everybody that was affected. That sucks for you. No, it really does. Um, congratulations to the roofers, <laughs> right. I guess. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I'm glad it missed us. I, I do, uh, we went down to Fairhope Pier last night though. Oh yeah. And watched the, the wind-driven waves crash against the oh, pier man. for a little while. Yeah. <clears throat> that was pretty nice. It was cool. It was fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I imagine I, there's going to be some piers that have to be rebuilt. Oh, like, yeah, like this. all over. Yeah. 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 It, it was fun looking at my, um, you know, the weather app has gotten so much more complicated than it used to be. Yeah. So uh, I finally um, did download one of those complicated weather apps, and, it like, it's, I don't know. It's nice. Like, it's got all these features that I like. Mm -hmm. But like you say, it's just complicated. Oh, no. I'm still using just the basic iPhone oh, yeah. weather app. But oh. now it's included, like, humidity ranges and wind maps and, like, all kinds of stuff. But it was yeah. fun looking at the wind map yesterday with every all the wind going south because we're on the yeah. west side of the storm, you know? Yeah. Um, drove across the bay yesterday, and the, the waves were lapping up against the side on... Uh, from the north, yeah. which is kind of unusual. Usually they're coming in from the south. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's some neat things to look at. Yeah. All the birds were gone. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> They'd felt, found some place to, to you know, hunker down for yeah the duration, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was a really nice day today. Yeah. I think we got a little rain at the house. Wednesday, but other than that, that's we haven't even gotten any rain here. Yeah, like from from the storm. So, 
Nice for us. So that's that's your weather report. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no hot Latinas, uh, yeah. but you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. <laughs> exactly. Um, we were just talking before the podcast and thought that we should capture it. And we didn't, so now we're going to try and reproduce, I guess. Or we're just going to have the same conversation and yeah. see where it goes. Is that uh, it's just amazing how neither of the major parties can ever produce a decent candidate. It's Well, it, it's steadily getting worse. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if you look <laughs> yes. back... Yeah, it really is. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you look <clears throat> at Kamala Harris versus Bill Clinton, yeah. like, I mean, there's a stark difference there. Yeah. And I'm no Bill Clinton fan. I'm just picking from the left. Mm-hmm. But you look at those two candidates, and they're not in the same ballpark. Yeah, one of them was charming. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, it, and knew how they'd, like, answer a question. And mm. I mean, not that he, Bill Clinton done it. Depends on what your definition of is. is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's I mean, still creative. It I is mean, very you creative. Give that to him. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, man, I tried to watch, for the purposes of this show, yeah. I tried to watch the uh, Kamala Harris, um, Oprah Winfrey. Oh, man. Town hall thing. So I've seen some clips from it. There's no way, zero chance I could get through that. Well, I couldn't either. <laughs> like, there's just no way. I couldn't either. And yeah. I felt like the last thing I saw was the um, the girl that they're hyping up as like uh, <laughs> that Donald Trump. Well, I don't. I, I'm not even entirely. Well, I mean, I know how they're trying to blame Donald Trump, but um, how how Donald Trump um, the girl that Donald Trump almost killed because of the Roe v Wade over turn thing yeah um who had some issues when she's 12 and she's like 28 now or something so obviously didn't affect her at all yeah. this <laughs> and i feel bad for her because <laughs> i mean she was an abuse victim she was raised by a stepdad that sexually abused her or whatever and yeah um and she had an abortion when she was 12 or 13 or something like that yeah. that was this rape child you know um, and that sucks for her. Yeah. It really does. But they're using her as an attack on Donald Trump, even though his policies had absolutely zero effect on her at all. Yeah. Um, and it's not even his policy. They just blame him because he put conservative justices on the court. Yeah. And I tend to side with the court on this. Like, I'd rather decentralize this plan. Yeah. Anyway, just... Generally that's, speaking, that's been my position this whole time. Yeah, um, but even if I didn't, you know, if even if I didn't agree with that, and we know that my political—I've talked about it enough on this podcast—that my political position on abortion is that I'm pro-choice in terms of a political yeah. perspective. Yeah. Um, because while I'm personally opposed to it, I think that it's the destruction of a life. That I don't. That essentially the philosophy of a libertarian is that you do not use the government to enforce your beliefs on somebody else. Yeah. And this is one of those things where, well, I mean, it's debatable. Yeah. I mean, I, I have my opinions on it, but but I'm actually with you on that. It is debatable. Uh, I mean, it's it's there's... There's valid arguments on both sides. Uh-huh. Um, whether or not I agree, I obviously I don't. It's very agree. fine people on both sides. Very fine people, yes. Yeah. Um, but but it's true. Like there there's valid arguments for both sides, and that's the reason I think turning it back over to the states is the right answer. Mm-hmm. Like let the areas where these people live make decisions for themselves. Yeah, you know? and I would like to see the states do it in more of a democratized fashion. Like I understand complaints about that, yeah. where without any kind of vote or referendum or anything, states have imposed particular um, yeah. policies on this, but and, and legislation. And, and so, and that's where part of this, like this will never be the free market never really acts clean. Mm-hmm. Like it's, you don't get, you, you get the right result, but it takes time and it mm-hmm. doesn't happen always happened exactly the way you would want it to. Right. And I think that that's what you see with this. Like mm-hmm. 10 years from now, if everything's left as it is, um, these states will figure this stuff out. And yeah. these, and even the states that are, are going against the people right now, it won't stay that way. Mm-hmm. Like the right people will get to the right places and these this stuff will get worked out. And yeah, it sucks right now. Like there's states with some some really bad laws and some, I mean, there's it sucks right now. I'm not saying it don't. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying that we will get to the right place if left to. Yeah, given time. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. So, but here's the part where I I have to start feeling bad because I'm going to make fun of her. Okay. Now. Because she gets up there at the at the this town hall, they and she gives like a little a little speech. Speech isn't the right word. It's too short for a speech, but she, yeah, you know, a little talk. D- delivers a little monologue. Um and and she says essentially, well, and you know, you can't wait until it's too late with reproductive health because then it's too late. And when it hits you, you know, it's like it hits you. And, and I was like, man, this girl was prepped by the same person that preps Kamala Harris. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Because then, you know, Kamala is up there saying, well, you know, we got to protect the rights because it's right to protect the rights because rights are right. You know, and when my, when we're driving down the street and my husband asked me before we get to the stop sign, well, which direction do we need to turn my loving, supporting husband? I I say, right. You know, because right is the right way because rights are important, right? (laughs) So that's where that meme came from. I've been seeing that meme floating around. I was there a meme. I'm sorry. I was, that was totally off the top of my head because she drives me crazy, but that's, that's how she talks. That is how she talks. Yes. Um, it is, it is insane. I had one bouncing around in my head today about the importance of the passage of time. The significance of the passage of time is just yeah. um, like, you know, because time passing, it's significant. And so yeah. she just repeats herself over and over again. Yeah. Um, it's like somebody stuck a keyword in her head and she has to say it as many times as she can. <laughs> Maybe she gets paid every time she says some particular words. I'm not really sure. Oh. But I, yeah, I got like 20 minutes into this thing. Yeah. And I was like, I, I couldn't believe how moronic she is. Yeah. Because yeah. she said nothing in that time. Nothing at all. It I really mean, she is amazing to me that she was able to get through the debate without showing some of that. Mm-hmm. Because like I say, not that she was Miss Sharp in the debate, but she put on a pretty good persona in the debate like she was halfway competent. Um, and she's not. Mm-mm. Like, I mean, she's just not the more, the more she's in front of a camera, especially unscripted, because she can get up there and deliver a speech and it won't yeah. be great, but it'll be passable. Right. Um, but unscripted time on camera will show that she is not <laughs> yeah. what she claims to be. She's not smart. And I was, it really kind of hit me watching that, what of the town hall that I did. Yeah. And so there were like, people would ask her questions, and of course her answer to every question, they're like, what are you going to do about this particular problem? And she says, well, let me tell you about how terrible my opponent's ideas about how to handle this problem are. And then she goes on for a few minutes about that. And then what would happen in this is that Oprah Winfrey would say, so what you're going to do is blah, 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 right? <laughs> so she, so Oprah's kind of picking up for yeah, her. Yeah, it's like covering yeah. for her idiocy. Yeah, yeah. It was it was amazing. Maybe it got better towards the end. Like maybe she settled in there real nice. Did you hear all the stuff about her gun thing? So I, I did want to actually talk about yeah, that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Just introduce that. So yeah, so she she made the claim or the statement that if anybody breaks into her house, they're getting shot. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the what irritated me. She's about, a gun over. Waltz is a gun owner. Yeah. You know. Which by the way, somebody came out. Her staff, I think, actually came out and said that that's just blatantly not true. Like yeah. she does it. But what irritated me about that particular clip is like any kind of journalist would have been like, well, what kind of gun do you own? Yeah. How often? And, and my question, my question, first question would have been, how often do you train with it? Yeah. Because just owning a gun is not enough, especially if you're standing on stage saying you're fixing to shoot somebody that entered your home. I want to know how much time you've spent with that weapon. Well, the the funny thing is that she she didn't lie at least about part of it. Now I don't know about her gun ownership, but um, she says somebody enters my breaks into my house, they're getting shot. Yeah, they are yeah. by Secret Service. By yeah, by not you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> maybe that was the maybe that was actually it. That's what maybe that's what she meant. May, maybe maybe and, and then she oh I probably shouldn't have said that. Now it serves her right yeah. if her staff came out and said yeah that's all a lie because yeah. her response to that whole thing was like oh I shouldn't have said that. Well my <laughs> staff will fix it later. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, her staff came out and said, at least as far as I, as I've seen, is that mm-hmm. that's just blatantly not true that she doesn't own a gun at all. Yeah. So wouldn't wouldn't surprise me one bit. Yeah. I um, what I wanted to point out about that is that like she, she that was scripted, totally and completely scripted. Oh, yeah. I am sure of it that that was planned. Yeah, yeah. Um, to to show her levity and how like clever and funny she is and. Yeah. Um, you know, how she's aligning with the Second Amendment people and yeah. so on. Like, that wasn't a slip the way she plays it off. Yeah. That that, that was, was a planned that statement. Was, yeah. Uh, intentional. I'm I'm certain of it. Yeah. Um, wow. So ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, hell, as long as we're on uh, Kamala Harris' idiocy... Yeah. <laughs> I want to play this clip from a couple of years ago because at this point, it seems to me that there's really only one meaningful difference between the two major candidates. Yeah. And that's the Ukraine war. Okay. So they're, they're competing to see who can be worse on Israel. <laughs> yeah. 100% um, on that. You know, they have their own unique brand of, plans to completely destroy our economy. Yeah. Uh, you know, Kamala Harris is just going to give money to everybody. Trump is going to, um, raise the price of all goods in this country by charging obscene tariffs. Yeah. Okay. Like, so they all, both of these are recipes for disaster. (laughs) Yeah. They're they're both going to be terrible in pretty much every way. Um, but, Kamala, like the Kamala campaign is actually running on being bad in, on Ukraine. Yeah. From our perspective, anyway. The, of, be, of promoting the war in Ukraine. <laughs> um, I was watching on uh, the Gray Zone the other day. Um, Aaron, um, Aaron Matei and uh, Max Blumenthal played a, an ad that's running in Pennsylvania right now that could have been like John Bolton could have written this ad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about how we've got to give all this money and support and challenge Russia and we can't it started off with like um saying, well, Reagan didn't allow those communist uh I forget, you know, autocrats or whatever. That wasn't the word that they used, I don't think. Dictator maybe something yeah. like that. Those communist dictators the Soviet communist dictators to run the world and, you know, but Trump will kind of, but there are no Soviet communist dictators in Russia. They're not communists. They're not Soviet. They're like, <laughs> neither of these things is true anymore. Like, yeah. Catch up. You're, you're stuck 40 years ago. Um, yeah, but a big part of the electorate is right there with them. Well, but that's the thing is that the, what they were advert, the advertisement is like, we're going to protect, um, you know, support, Ukraine to defeat Russia so that Russia doesn't invade Poland and so on. There's a whole lot of Poles. Yeah. Or, or people of Polish descent the anyway same, yeah. in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And so they're just playing right into it. Yep. It's kind of unreal. But I want to play this clip from a couple of years ago. You'll probably recognize it because it made some rounds a couple of years ago, but it deserves being played again right now yeah. that Kamala Harris is a presidential candidate. Uh-huh. So let's just go ahead and play this. All right. Now in the Ukraine, down in layman's terms for people who don't understand what's going on and how can this directly affect the people of the United States? So Ukraine is a country in Europe. It exists next to another country called Russia. Russia is a bigger country. Russia is a powerful country. Russia decided to invade a smaller country called Ukraine. So Basically, that's wrong, Mm -hmm. and it goes against everything that we stand for. There are terms that we use. We say we respect the sovereignty, the territorial integrity of countries, right? Their independence. Russia has gone into Ukraine militarily, unprovoked, with no justification other than to exercise its power to take over another country. So essentially, that's what's at stake. And we as America are saying that's wrong. And we will stand with Ukraine in saying that that is wrong. But that's essentially where we are. That's essentially the issue. And when it comes to what we know to be principles of fairness, we know that what Russia is doing is wrong. When it comes to what needs to happen then, well, there needs to be severe consequence and accountability. And that's why 
You'll hear on the news that we talk about sanctions, which is basically having Russia pay a financial cost to the point that we can have a real impact, put a real hurt on their economy as a consequence for their bad behavior, which is resulting in the loss of innocent lives. And that's where we are. That's what the issue is, essentially. Yeah, so, like, I remember that clip now that we re listened to it. And I just want people to kind of keep in mind, like, she was on a black radio station speaking to what she knew was black voters. And it's just my opinion, but I think that's the reason she dumbed it down to the level that she did there is because she was like, these people are idiots and I need them to understand this. And mm-hmm. that's how she put it out there. Yeah. So I, I have a, I have a little different take on yeah. that. Um, first off, like you listen to that, she, you think that she's like talking to a third grade class or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's yeah. Adults that she's talking to. Yeah. Now I, I did keep the part of the question in there is like, they asked for a layman's breakdown. They did. But, that's beyond now, which is the you, reason I think that she she answered it the way she did. She was like, mm-hmm. "I'm going to tell these these idiots what's what." <laughs> okay, this is what I think. Yeah, is that she's an idiot, and that's actually the extent of her understanding oh, well, of what's going is, on. No, make no mistake, that is the extent of her understanding of it. Like, don't don't take me wrong that that, but the way she the the reason we just think that this is not fair because the bigger guy is pushing on the little guy and the oh. yeah, but that's like that's as far as she understands it, no mm-hmm. doubt. But the the way she worded it mm-hmm. was to to speak to a a group that she was she thought was less intelligent than what she obviously is, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the reason it came off like she was talking to kindergartners. Um, is because that's just how little respect she has for that community. That's the yeah. point I'm trying to get to. Oh, I, I understand what you're saying. I just, yeah. I don't think that, I think that you're wrong. I think that that is the extent of her understanding. It is. No, I'm, I believe And it. so she's not actually dumbing it down for them. That's as smart as she can make it. Yeah. No, I, I think we're... At I that think time, at least. This is two years ago. Yeah, I think you're right, too. Like, I think that is, at least at that time, that was the extent mm-hmm. of her understanding it. But... I just think that the, that she framed it the way she did because of a lack of respect for the community. Yeah. Um, but believe me, I don't think that she's I don't think that she's progressed a lot further than that in her as far as her understanding of mm-hmm. it since then. Yeah. Um, oh, um, by the way, like uh, Scott Horton's book Unprovoked. Yeah. A word you heard in there. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, is supposed to be out in like a couple of weeks. Oh really? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Looking What's, forward to that. So this is the this is going to be the Russia book, right? Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah, that's that's going to be good. He he uh, he actually showed it on the Tom Woods show. It's like <laughs> it, it's like the Great Deformation in terms of thickness. It's about really? it's about two and a half inches thick, yeah. and a, a, like a seven by ten. Not the little. Yeah. the smaller books that he's been putting out. <laughs> well, he should, like I say, that's definitely a book I would recommend to people when it comes out. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a little spoiler alert on it. Like you ain't going to hear much different from what you've heard on this show versus yeah. what he's going to lay out in that book. Oh, he's going to lay out a lot more detail than we provide though. Oh, 100%. But I'm just saying as far as like overall, like mm-hmm. facts, like that's, I mean, we're, we're, aligned with that yeah <laughs> like you're you're getting that information from us very much broken down <laughs> with footnotes yeah <laughs> right <laughs> yeah he'll so, have lots of footnotes yeah um actually well, because, i think he said gonna, i think because, he said he had over six thousand footnotes good night <laughs> six over six thousand citations something like that yeah in the book so i mean that's how he operates uh-huh. but i mean like that's gonna be a book that if you want go ahead to have, challenge me and yeah. try <laughs> yeah. It, well, yeah. I mean, he knows he has to cite it that way because mm-hmm. people will will rip him apart if he doesn't. Yeah. Like he has all the knowledge. He knows mm-hmm. where it all all the stuff. But people, yeah. yeah well, just like you say, challenge. Like <laughs> you don't believe me? This is where it's at. Yeah. Go look it up yourself. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. But I I was just I was amazed re-listening to that. It like yeah. this is a person who's going to be president potentially. Potentially. Like there's, I, there's a good chance that she's going to win this thing, by the way. I know. Um, I'm just telling you right now, like it's, it's not that I think Trump is going to be that much better, but yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I really despise Donald Trump, 
But, I mean, at the very least, like, her policies are worse. Yeah, they are. I mean, both of them will tank the economy with their their <laughs> plans here. But at least Donald Trump's plan actually is promoting American business. Yeah. Not just stealing from all of us to give to the rest of us and not just cranking the money printer up a couple of more notches. Yeah. Because that's Kamala Harris pushing plan. prices up over and over again. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, at least Donald Trump's plan is like an America first kind of plan. Yeah. Like we're going to charge foreigners extra to sell stuff in our country. And hopefully that'll promote American business. Yeah. I mean, it's going to drive prices up too in its own way, but at least it, it also, creates a an artificial competitiveness for American business in some sectors. Yeah. Uh, you know. Well and, that, and that's not high praise. Don't misunderstand. Like I'm <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not you know. uh, like I say, I, I go back and forth with Trump. I like him and I I despise him. It's it's a it's a constant battle for me personally. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Well uh but like I said before we played that clip, I mean, I think that, that this is the like really meaningful difference between the these two candidates yeah. is Ukraine. Oh, absolutely. Because Trump wants to end this war. Yeah. Um some way or another. And then of course uh Zelensky well, was here. Yeah. Essentially doing campaign <laughs> rallies for the Democrats in Pennsylvania while he was here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I knew he I was here. That, I didn't hear a lot about the his time here, but yeah, I, I I don't know that he understood that. Yeah, but he was paraded out as a as a prop for Democratic campaign stuff in Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's wild. So, um, like I said, I I don't think that he understood that, but he was being used. But that's how it was being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, but I do see a shift. And this is kind of hopeful to me, is that I do see a shift in how the Ukraine thing's being handled. Because um, there was some spook, former spook, anyway, representative of the intelligence apparatus in this country on Morning Joe last week. Like this last week, I think. Yeah. Um, who was like trying to change the narrative. Now it was gaslighting of the highest order, Yeah. but he was saying, well, you know, one of the problems that we have in Ukraine is that we never really defined what victory is in Ukraine. Go ahead, Gary. How did we define victory in Ukraine for the last two years? <laughs> We're going to keep Russia from invading all of Europe. <laughs> That's what we wish they would take, actually. Like, that's our yeah. suggestion of what we should define victory as so that yeah. we can just get out well, of it I mean, and be done with it. That's what they keep saying. It's like, if we don't mm -hmm. stop him here, he's going to take over all of Europe. No, know? but... I mean, you can correct me if you think that I'm wrong in my assessment of this. Okay. Yeah. But my understanding of what we have, what the United States has been <laughs> describing as victory in Ukraine for the last two years is that we're going to drive every Russian troop out of all of Ukraine, including Crimea. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> which was victory. never ever going to happen no but the, there was there was a strong belief for a while that that was what was that that was just going to happen mm -hmm. um at least coming from your mainstream media i mean there's you know but that's like like you say that was that was never going to happen anyway the number of arguments that i had with people over the last two years where i was saying ukraine has no chance of winning and they were well, people were Just telling you, or telling you, arguing was, with me. well, they are winning though, but they're winning. Yeah. And it was like, are they? Like, it, it <laughs> certainly doesn't seem that Strangely, way. they keep losing territory though. But I, yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, I, No, but they're gaining this. territory. Oh yeah, but when they're gaining territory, they're losing troops. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which they don't have enough of. Yeah. Like, so... So uh, that was my understanding over the last couple of years is that there was really a belief that Ukraine could win. And what Ukraine winning meant was that they would drive Russia completely out of their territory, including Crimea. Yeah. Um, so now this guy's out there saying, well, we've never really defined victory in Ukraine. Yeah. And that's the problem, which is, like I said, gaslighting of the highest order. Yeah. And the reason I think is that it's finally been accepted <coughs> at those highest higher tier political levels that that's not going to happen there's no way that ukraine cannot 
cannot win this war. No. Unless we're willing to go fight there. Well, that's that is and that's what I was saying earlier. Like mm-hmm. the only I mean Ukraine, Ukraine can win this, but it means us getting boots on the ground and playing our planes with our people flying them in the air. Like that's yep, the only leaving way. our bases in Germany, yeah. which will then get bombed. Yeah. And yeah, so on. Like that's, that's the only way. Um and if anybody <laughs> I challenge anybody to tell me that that's what we as Americans want yeah. and need. Like there's there's no argument that that's something that that's a good idea. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what order to handle this here. Um Let's do it this way. We'll we'll talk about like some changes that have made have been made and then talk about okay. escalation. All right. All right. So we said last week that Russia had announced that they were going to make some changes to their um nuclear posture. Yeah. And so they have. Now they've announced those changes. Yeah. And essentially what it comes down to <coughs> is that they have changed their nuclear posture to include the ability to strike nuclear nations that are supporting a war by non-nuclear nations against Russia. Yeah. Well, you mean like what we're doing right now? Yes. Exactly. I mean, that's qualifies. So Russia's position has been well we're going to try and ignore that all of Europe is involved in this war and we're dealing directly with Ukraine and we're going to continue to deal directly with Ukraine. And we're going to let this go because you guys are going to stop eventually, right? Like, Be- well, you know. because the assumption, because you, because Russia is winning, like that's the, mm-hmm. the reason they've let this slide the way they have. And it's, it's kind of insane. Well, and you, because they don't want a war with NATO. Well, no, they don't. They, they mm-hmm. absolutely don't want that. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, but it's, it's also the fact that, that they are winning the war. Yeah. Like it's not like we've done all of this stuff to help Ukraine and all of spent all this money and, and done this and that. And, and there's st- Russia's still winning the war and Russia knows that they're still winning the war. Like that's that's kind of the difference here. If it was if it looked like Russia was fixing to get slapped in the face here, mm-hmm. it would be a different posture. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's probably true. But what they're they're trying to send a signal at this point. Yeah, they're saying, look, we've had enough of your involvement. Yeah, like. We are going well, to start consider it, but, you a belligerent in this too, well, because it has to end. Mm-hmm. Because they, because I mean, essentially, Russia has won the war, but Ukraine won't submit. Yeah. So, and the reason Ukraine won't submit is because we've basically told them when the war started that you're in it now. Yeah. Well, that's not it. I think I think the main reason that Ukraine won't submit at this point is because the elites in Ukraine, the political elites in Ukraine are making tons of money off of this. Oh, I'm sure they are. I mean, I I don't doubt that. Because (coughs) the polls in Ukraine say that the people are ready for this to be done. Yeah. I mean, there are always going to be people that will fight till the end. Well, yeah, and I I understand that because mm -hmm. I'd probably be one of them, like, you know. Like, if you were a Ukrainian living in the Donbass, maybe. maybe. If you're a Ukrainian in Kiev, do you really care? About well, those Russian-speaking people in the Donbass that you hate anyway. Well, yeah. Who's under? <laughs> well, I mean, with, whether they're under your government or ours, and and that's yeah. kind of the big difference is that um, to Russia, this really is an existential issue. Well, yeah. Like this is their border country. Like they don't want enemy weapons on their border that close to their capital. Like this is an existential issue to them. Yeah, and. To the United States, it's not. It's a plan in a way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when it comes down to it, how much do we really care which government controls eastern and southern Ukraine? Yeah. <laughs> like, it doesn't, ma- doesn't matter to us. And because this is really two things to us. One is it's a way to weaken Russia, who had become a competitor again, a hegemonic competitor, at least in regionally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a way to knock them down some, yeah, which hasn't really worked. Like their economy's stronger and their military's much stronger now yeah. than at the beginning of this. Um, and it's a way to funnel public funds into private companies. Yeah, like take a bunch of tax money, give it to Boeing and 
Lockheed Martin and General Dynamics and Raytheon and whoever. Yeah. Right? Like, it's it's that whole military-industrial complex that sucks away so much of our money. And so this is a good excuse for it. They found a better excuse in Israel. Yeah. And so we're kind of pulling away from Ukraine, which is why I think that this guy went out there and said, you know, we have to define what victory means instead of redefine what victory means. Because like we've been talking about for two years, the U.S. can't come out here and admit that we've lost. Yeah. So you have to set victory conditions that make it look like you've won. Yeah. That's the only way they can present it to the public <laughs> after all this time and yeah. all this money. Yeah. Um, so just you have like, to be like able to say... Uh, Afghanistan, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, so you have to be able to say... This is what we've advocated for two years, is that you come out and you say, we've won. We stopped Russia in Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't taken over the rest of Europe like they were going to if we hadn't fought this war. Yeah, exactly. Which, of course, was never going to happen, but it doesn't matter because most people out there, they don't know. Yeah, they'll read the headline. Yeah. Be like, oh, oh, we won. So, yay, victory, we're number one. Yeah, yeah. As usual, et cetera. So I, I, think, that that, I think that they're actually trying to shift towards that. Towards that kind of, yeah. Um, I could be wrong. We'll see how it plays out. But this... There's been another reaction to Russia changing its nuclear posture, and that's a bunch of hawks getting out there and saying stupid things about how we don't have to worry about nuclear war. And so let's play a couple of those right now. All right. Yeah? We're going to hear from Mustache Man? We're going to hear from Mustache Man. We'll start with Bolton. We'll go to Pierce Morgan. Pierce Morgan okay. had a... Um, <laughs> Pierce Morgan had John Mearsheimer on his show. Oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of Mearsheimer. I don't agree with all that Mearsheimer has to say, but... He seems smart. He's he's sharp. Yeah. He's sharp. And <coughs> <laughs> my favorite bit was... So Pierce tried to argue with Mearsheimer through the whole thing about Israel and Ukraine. Yeah. And at the end, he was like, I, you know, thank you, uh, Professor Mearsheimer, for coming on the show. I always really enjoy these debates. And I actually laughed out loud when he said that. Because <laughs> I was like, that was not a debate. Yeah, right. No, <laughs> that was that was you, Pierce, making a fool of yourself for half an hour <laughs> against a much greater intellect. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, let's play... Let's play Bolton, and then we'll play Pierce, All right. and then we'll we'll get back to this. All right. If you're worried about what Putin said, and we react accordingly, you're going to give him what we what he wants uh, at absolutely no cost to him. My my response to Putin's remark, as to earlier threats involving nuclear weapons, is to say to him privately and publicly, if Russia uses a nuclear weapon in Ukraine. Uh, Vladimir Putin has signed his personal death warrant. Against all expectations, they have massively exceeded all the doom-laden predictions of the first few weeks and months of this war. And I think we should support them in the way we've been doing by giving them everything they ask for. Because let's be honest about this. What Putin does, he just waves his nuclear rattle and he terrifies people. But every red line that he set has been crossed. He said, if you, if you give them tanks... That will be a red line for me. We did. He didn't do anything. He said, if you give them aircraft, air fighter jets, that's a red line. We crossed that red line. Nothing happened. A and so on. There is no evidence that he means any of his saber rattling about nuclear weapons because he knows the moment he uses a nuclear weapon, he's dead and Russia's vaporized. That's a reality. And I don't know why we allow ourselves to be held ransom by this monstrous dictator who just thinks that a nuclear deterrent means he can just go, I'm going to nuke you if you don't let me do what I want. So first, I want to say that Pierce Morgan's idea that we cross these red lines, and I, I, I would dispute whether Putin identified those things as red lines in the way that Pierce Morgan means it, but that we cross these red lines and nothing happened. Putin did nothing. Talk to the Ukrainians about that. Because I think that they would disagree. Yeah. Because there was an escalation from Russia after every single one of these things that they said, don't do this, and we did. Yeah. And the result is <laughs> very little uh, infrastructure left in Ukraine. <laughs> right. Like a country that's just absolutely destroyed at this point. Yeah. Because there was an escalation after each of these things. Yeah. That, <clears throat> that uh, Russia started targeting a wider array of infrastructure 
projects, electricity and water and things like that. Yeah. So the idea that there was no consequence yeah. is fallacious to begin with. Yeah. All right. Then, of course, there's the idea that, okay, well, if Putin launches a nuclear attack, there's no way he will ever do that. This is, of course, uh, Pierce Morgan's idea is the same thing that we've talked about many times, this idea that, well, he hasn't launched a nuclear strike yet, so obviously we can keep going and he never <laughs> yeah, will. We, we keep, uh, we've pushed him this far and he hasn't done it yet. So if we keep, so let's pushing, keep pushing him, yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, but the idea that, okay, well, if he, he knows that if he did this, that, that he would be vaporized, that he would be com- killed and, and Russia would be totally vaporized. So would we. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, that's the point that you're like willfully forgetting here is yeah, you're right. Like if Mm -hmm. he launched a new nuclear attack, yeah, sure. We'd get him, but he'd get us too. Yeah. As soon as they see those missiles in the air, they're launching everything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, and, and here's the thing too, is that at least historically nuclear planning for the U S was, well, if, we ever have to launch an attack against Russia, then we also launch an attack against China. Oh yeah. Because now supposedly uh, Kennedy was supposed to have taken this out of the nuclear, nuclear planning. But I mean, I would (laughs) bet it's back because you know that there are guys in the Pentagon now or other consultants from Rand corporation or whatever um, that are saying, well, okay, if we launch a if we end up in a nuclear war with Russia, we have to attack China because if we survive a nuclear war with Russia but we're greatly weakened and we haven't weakened China too, we're really in trouble then. <laughs> so, if we're going to launch an attack against Russia, we have to launch an attack against China too. Well, and North Korea too because they've got nukes as well, and we can't let any of those go through. And of course, once we launch missiles anywhere, everybody's going to assume that they're coming at them. Yeah. I mean, if we were to, if we were to launch, let's say randomly that North Korea, which supposedly has missiles that could reach us at this point. Yeah. Let's say that North Korea launched a nuclear attack against the United States and the United States responded by sending a dozen or so missiles at North Korea. Yeah. Well, those missiles go over the Arctic. Yeah. Okay. Russia sees those missiles and they're like, well, I mean, they're probably going towards North Korea. But we don't know. But we don't know. And we can't wait until they hit (laughs) their target. Yeah. To figure this out. So, and those guys demonize us for everything. Yeah. And maybe they're just using this as an excuse to launch an (laughs) attack against us. We don't know. It would be in line. Yeah. Right. So we have to launch our missiles. So we we launch a few dozen missiles at the U.S. Well, then Russia launches their missiles at the U.S. And the U.S. launches everything. Yeah. And then China's like, whoa, look at all these missiles in the air. Some of them are certainly heading towards us. We better get ours in the air, too. Yeah. At, like, yeah there's, there's no such thing. I There are people that maintain that there's a possibility for a limited nuclear exchange. Exchange, yeah. I don't believe it. I mean, I'm with you. Like, I just, I don't, I don't see how that scenario plays out. Mm -hmm. Like, cool. But that, that scenario like relies on the fact that cooler heads will prevail. And anybody that's watched our government the past decade, at least there ain't cooler heads there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just not Yeah. Um, on either side, like either any of these countries, like, I mean, we're probably the worst, but I mean, if anybody's got the cooler head, it would be Putin in Russia. Yeah. Um, P- Putin has been the coolest head on the planet in yeah. for decades, it seems to me. Yeah. Like, and he's been actually... The most calculated. Yeah, and sure. the most careful and cautious about... And the most judicious about responding to provocation. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's over We and killed over again. Russian troops in Syria a few years back. Yeah. We yeah. killed Russian troops in Syria. Yeah. And he's like, well, 
Things happen. Mistakes happen. Yeah. 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 That was literally like what he said. Like he, like I, when, I remember when he made mm-hmm. that press conference and mm-hmm. he was out there. He's like, you know, it's it's tragic, but these type of things happen in the face, fog of war and things like that. Yeah. It's like, dude, he did not have to do that. No. And there's no way that our politicians on our side would have done that. Yeah, I don't. I agree. I don't think that that could have happened over here. No, it, it couldn't. So. But but the reason it couldn't is because we've turned the volume up so high mm-hmm. against Russia in general. Yeah. You know. Because they elected Donald Trump, you know, in yeah, 2016. Yeah, exactly. It really. And in, they're going to do it I again guess, in I mean, I guess in the end, I mean, it is the Democrats that's to blame for at least that so- part of the saga. That's that's definitely a huge part of it, that they, they had to demonize Russia because— it, they had to create the whole Russiagate scandal yep. as an excuse to why Donald Trump Could beat win. Hillary Clinton. Yep, exactly. <sighs> and even though that whole thing has turned out to be just a, a whole <laughs> bunch of uh, claptrap, it's all yeah. a lie. Yeah. Like nothing came of it at all. And they, you know, people talk about, well, there were, um, you know, they charged some Russians for the whatever you know some kind of online whatever oh the, uh, they the indicted troll, how, yeah the troll farm yeah, that's it yeah. um they indicted a bunch of russians for the troll farm and the the russians responded they were like okay give us discovery we're coming to court yeah, right. and the and the u.s was like we dropped the charges <laughs> because <laughs> right. it was just a lie yeah it just it was yeah. there, there's no way they could defend the charges in court there's no yeah. way so yeah. they only made it as a show yeah. and that made the headlines yeah but them dropping the charges when the russians were like well we'll come to court yeah <laughs> that didn't make the headlines i mean it made it made like back pages Some, yeah exactly you know but yeah. like the whole thing was just a lie and I, you know, to me, it's it's really about that the U.S. cannot stand the idea that anybody would challenge our hegemony throughout the world. Yeah. That's really what it's about. That's why we're antagonistic against Russia and China. Not because Russia and China are really a threat to us in the terms of security of the United States. Yeah. But that Russia and China are a threat to our complete dominance of the entire world. It, I think about um, Barack Obama at one point had called um, Russia a regional threat or a regional power. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing to me because, like, he was right about that. Like, at the time, especially at the time, like, that's what Russia was. Um, and it's like that we can't even tolerate that. Yep. Like, that's, that's what this boils down to. We're is that, antagonistic over China. With China over who has control of the South China Sea. Yeah. It's in the name. <laughs> China Sea. <laughs> yeah. It's it's just unreal. And there's no reason for this. We can live perfectly happily with these countries. We yeah. could get energy from Russia. We can get a whole bunch of cheap knickknacks from China. Yeah. There could be no problem here. No yeah. problem at all. Yeah. If... And for the American people, there is no problem. But for the government who wants to control everything, there yeah, is. That's that's where that's where the problem comes in. And you know, there's the the whole thing with Ukraine now, this idea that we can just if we just give them more. Like because that's you know, that's another thing that's another thing that <coughs> um, Pierce Morgan was saying in that is like, whoa, just give them the weapons that they're asking for so that they can continue to fight as effectively as they've fought so far. Yeah. And look at how everybody thought that the war was gonna be over in weeks or months or whatever. <laughs> and Ukraine did a great job of fending off Russia. I was like, you, well, yeah, that was before Russia mobilized. Yeah, right. That's when Russia was just trying to make a point yeah. and get an agreement. Yeah. And once they found out that an agreement, well, well essentially once the West pressured yeah. Zelensky to pull yeah. out of uh, negotiations with Russia, that's when Russia was like, all right, I guess we're going to have to actually do this. Yeah. And mobilize their forces. Yeah. And... You know, this incursion into Kursk has been a disaster. The uh, counteroffensive in 2023. Well, and like, that's, that's something else is that 
So, and that, cause that's the thing that Zelensky's really wanting right now. He's wanting to, he's wanting us to give weapons that he can launch into Russia. Mm-hmm. Um, like that. Like well, the, I mean, that's what Russia was trying to deter by saying, Hey, if a nuclear power is giving a non-nuclear power support to in a war against us, yeah, then they become a legitimate target. Yeah. The, the point is to try and say, Hey, look, that's enough of this. Yeah. Like we're ready for this thing to be over and it'll be over if you just get out of it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the, the whole idea that Zelensky thinks that, that if he has weapons that he can launch into Russia, that that's going to change the war. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's not going to, that's not going to create a Ukrainian victory somehow. Like, I mean, it, that just the whole argument just doesn't make any sense. Well, you know, we can just let Mearsheimer answer this. We, we, you know, I played Pierce Morgan's clip so I can make fun of him, but we may as well play uh, John Mearsheimer's clip where he ex- answers exactly that question. All right, um, because he answers he la- it, he lays it out, yeah, thoroughly. So cool. let's play that clip. All right, we could give them the missiles they want. Missiles are not going to make any difference. The idea that giving them a TACMs or storm shadows is going to turn the tide on the battlefield is not a serious argument. Uh, the, the, the Ukrainians are doomed. What really matters here are the number of troops, the number of artillery pieces on the front lines, mm. and the amount of air power each side has each side has over the battlefield. And there, the Russians have a decisive advantage, and that advantage is increasing by the day. And there's nothing we can do to reverse that. The Ukrainians are doomed. And given that the Ukrainians are doomed, the best thing to do at this point in time is put an end to the war. Would you That's have said, the would morally you have, correct position, would you at have least said, from my point of view. Now, first off, I wish... I would say go look this up. Um, it's towards the end of the Pierce Morgan show where this particular thing is addressed. But look, go look this up yourself just so that you can see Mearsheimer's face. When Pierce Morgan says, we can give them all the weapons that they want. Yeah. And he's just like. He's astounded. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. yeah, completely. Yeah. Like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you think that's going to help how? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, the whole thing was just really funny to me because it was just like this kind of midwit in Pierce Morgan trying to make a case against a guy who has a 50 year career in studying this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he answers it exactly. Like these weapons aren't going to make a difference at this point. You, yeah. you remember a few months ago when we were talking about the, <laughs> um, Ukrainians, uh, running low on troops and that the average age of their soldiers at this point was like 40. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Well now that average age is 45. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Yeah. I mean, the... That it, means that means if that was happening here, like me and you be out there. Yeah. Like, and, and we'd be the average. Yeah, right. That That's insane. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sorry. Like, I know I'm... I can fight a war. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can fight a lot better than me, I bet, because I'm telling you right now, my body ain't built for that no more. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's exactly it. Like, you know infantry out there you like you gotta lug stuff around oh, you gotta dude. be you gotta be fit and i am fit i but i'm just saying i don't like, see you out there fighting not, the war well not fit in the way that a 22 year old doing the same stuff yeah, would be exactly yeah exactly so i it is he's right it's lost it's lost for ukraine and it's been lost for ukraine and that the point that he was trying to make throughout the interview was that the moral position was to put an end to the war to end the killing yeah. yeah. Like that's where we need to be because there's no way that Ukraine can win. And so the longer you prolong the war, you just end up with more deaths and more destruction at yeah. with nothing to gain from it. Yeah. And especially at this point, like you so said, you're not, you're not, they're not going to regain any of that territory mm-hmm. at this point. Like that's just wild. Yeah. Yeah. So man, I don't know. And, I, the, and the funny thing is, is, I bet if you set Russia down to the negotiating table, which by the way, they were not doing, at least as far as I no, know, no. Um, all Russia would give most of the, te- probably not all, but most of the territory back. 
Yeah, exchange, they don't want to handle all that. They don't want to deal with all of that. And it's all destroyed anyway. Yeah, they didn't want it in the first place. That's my point, is that if you set them down right now and, and negotiated it, what they want is for Ukraine not to be part of NATO. Yeah. Like that's the that's the want here. Mm-hmm. So and that that hasn't changed through all of this. That I mean, yeah. I I just had a thought. Yeah. Um. So this this is in this country. It's kind of analogous to the Tex-Mex War. Oh yeah. Because Mexico owned the Texas territory. Yeah. Um. And they invited now. All right. So here's a little difference. They invited. Americans in to settle and start producing on the land in, in Mexico's territory of Texas. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say that the Ukrainians necessarily invited the Russians in. It's just a matter of history that like the Russian, um, empire and then the Soviet union controlled that territory. And so there were a bunch of Russians living in the East and South of Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, ethnic Russians. Um, but then after the fall of the Soviet Union, that territory was assigned to Ukraine, essentially. Yeah. Um, but it still had a bunch of et- ethnic Russians in there. Yeah. Well, in the Tex-Mex War, there was a point at which Mexico was like, you know, we don't like all these Americans in our territory. Yeah. And um, started <laughs> being hostile towards the Americans, trying to reclaim land and so on. And... Uh, we went and fought over it. Yeah. I mean, and Texas didn't even become a part of the United States immediately afterwards. Texas was its own republic for a little while. Yeah. But the United States went and fought. Yeah. Like the U.S. Army went and fought in Texas to protect Americans in a Mexican territory. Yeah. That's what's happening in Ukraine. That's yeah. what's happened here. It's. Yeah. I think this is a kind of an analogous situation yeah. because there are Russians living in Ukraine yeah. And Ukraine became hostile towards the Russians living in Ukraine. Yeah. <clears throat> and now so Russia, Russia has stepped in yeah. to protect Russians living in Ukraine. Yeah. Wow. That's true. If, and, if and, people know better than that, like I would love to hear your yeah. insight. Um, citations appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> Michael at the Liberty Mike.com. Like maybe I'm misinterpreting that, but yeah. the, and like I said, it just occurred to me, but yeah. it seems like an analogous situation to me. Well, it makes sense. I mean, that mm-hmm. it makes sense from the Russian standpoint and from our standpoint then, you know. Yeah. They're, they're your people, they're, whether, you know, wherever the lines are drawn, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, so hopefully Kamala Harris loses and because Donald I really Trump despise loses. her. I mean, I would like to see almost anybody but Donald Trump win. Almost, <laughs> almost anybody but Donald Trump win. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> uh, Except Kamala Harris. Yeah. Right. Uh, um, and at least maybe we end one war. Yeah. Yeah. That would be something. And then we help fund Israel and their complete and utter destruction of Palestinians. We can, we can destroy the planet from that side. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, but at least that's not a nuclear war. Yeah. Not yet. I mean, I, I hate to just relegate the Palestinians to obscurity or, you know, a lack of, of compassion or sympathy or whatever. Um, That's certainly not the case, but the war in Ukraine is more important to me than the war in Gaza because the war in Gaza doesn't include the possibility of a nuclear annihilation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so on that case alone, I would say Trump is preferable to Kamala, yeah. even though I'm not voting for him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've been swayed yet? Nope. No, nope. I can't vote for the guy. I can't yeah. do it. I don't yeah. like him. I don't approve of a whole lot of what he does. But in this one situation, at least, he's yeah. better. No, I, I mean, I agree. 
And frankly, on the economic thing, he's better, but he's not, it's not because he's doing something that I like. Yeah. It's because he's doing something that's less bad <laughs> than what the other <laughs> side's doing. Yeah. And I, I, man, I can't offer a vote on that case. It just encourages the same kind of thing. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to vote for somebody because they're less bad than the other person because then you just end up with a bunch of bad candidates all the time. Which is what we have. Yeah. So. Because people keep making that decision. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know, and you know, like I, I've told, I've said for years <coughs> that my uh, my philosophy on voting is that you never vote for a major party candidate and you never vote for an incumbent. Yeah, it's a good policy. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, if there's ever an incumbent worth voting for, I will reconsider. But yeah. hadn't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah. At least not that you've had the opportunity. Yeah, to yeah, not for here, it. not yeah. for me to vote for. Yeah. I was going to say, like, if, if you lived in Massey's district, you might, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would, <laughs> might consider I would, him an incumbent worthy of a vote. <laughs> yeah, I would vote for Thomas Massey if I was in his district. district. Yeah. That's true. And I would vote for Rand Paul. Oh, absolutely. If I lived in Massey's district, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that is wild. They both have the same district. Well, I mean, yeah. Rand Paul's the whole state, so. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, because he's senator. He's the senator, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um. And anyway, anyway. <laughs> so I, if we can, oh, uh, so there's another story that I want to talk about, but we haven't had time to really pick up. So this is a local one. Um, <laughs> and, and kind of what I want, I want to address about it is the, I don't Complete know if it's the ignorance <laughs> of government. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't know if it's the inability or just the disinterest of government in actually protecting kids. Yeah. Um, when I talked to Dr. Miller, you know, her position was that there's a complete disinterest, yeah, um, in protecting kids. But I, I, I want to, I want to believe that that's not the case. That it's just ineffective or whatever. But anyway, there was a a local case here. There was a um a guy who had been a coach and teacher at a school and is now a police officer. Um, and, but they executed a search warrant of his house just a couple of days ago. His name is BJ Squires. Um, because of a long string of accusations of him, um, sexually assaulting maybe yeah. would be the word, uh, uh or uh, the, they've got a term for that, for what he did. Like uh, what you were telling me earlier as far as the sending the messages and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's essentially sending sexually explicit messages to underage girls, soliciting photos, had, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and, and I actually know somebody whose daughter was a victim of this guy yeah. uh, eight years ago. Wow. And yeah. nothing was ever <laughs> done. And yeah. since then, since this accusation, the FBI was involved in that case years ago. Yeah. And in fact, the, apparently they still have his daughter's old cell phone as evidence. Yeah. The FBI does, but nothing ever came of it. Yeah. Um, since that time, the guy was hired as a police officer. Uh, it just so, boggles the mind, man. Like how does, how <clears throat> does that happen? Yeah. Anyway, um, as of this morning when I was looking uh, for information on the case, unfortunately, there's just not a lot of information on the case because it's a local thing, first off. Yeah. Um, but uh, as of this morning, they had executed the search warrant on Wednesday. To, this is Friday morning, or this is Friday evening that we're recording. Yeah. Um, they had ex executed the search warrant of his home. They had seized a computer on Wednesday. Um, but at least as of this morning, there was no reporting of any charges having been brought yet. Yeah. So I, I think that we're probably going to talk about this in more detail next week. Hopefully Some something more. would have, will have happened by then yeah. and we'll just have to see. Um, but, but the fact that you, what you said a minute ago, this is a local case and it's like, that should be national news. The fact that somebody could be under that type of investigation mm -hmm. and leave a job in teaching to go into police in, or law enforcement. Yeah. Like, that's a national story. I'm sorry. Like, that's, <laughs> yeah, you're right. It does seem like it should be. Like, that should be, like, headline <laughs> news stuff right there. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just saying that, that that can happen just absolutely. It infuriates you. Yeah. Like, it 
it, it just, I, I don't know how else to put it. Yeah. When I was, when I was talking to, um, my friend about his daughter's involvement in this, cause he brought it up to me. I hadn't even heard about the case. Yeah. Um, he brought it up to me after the search warrant and the guy was arrested. Yeah. And, uh, and so my first question when he was <laughs> telling me about it was like, wait a minute, this guy got a job as a police officer after all of this had happened with your daughter. He's like, yeah, you're asking the right question. Yeah. <laughs> like, how did this happen? How does that happen? Yeah. So, so anyway, um, it's kind of a downer to leave on, I guess, <laughs> but oh, well, um, yeah. what do you do? This whole, this whole episode has been a downer. We're just all trying to avoid nuclear war. Yeah. We all just uh, want to live. <laughs> Yeah, just a few more years. I just want a few more years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the plea of our species for eternity right there. Just want a few more years. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's wrap it up because uh, we're, we're over an hour anyway. Yeah. Um, well, we expect to be back next week. I'm like giving I'm, Liberty I'm, Larry the eye because yeah, uh, you know. as far as I know we should be good yeah next week shouldn't be a problem yeah maybe Friday again but uh, that's fine um uh, yeah that's fine I actually kind of like recording on Friday well we'll see how it goes if we can do Thursday ne- next week that might be better for me huh. I mean I, I, I have no clue I mean yeah I, we'll have to see if we can do Thursday next week I think that's probably better for me okay. um but Whatever we have to do, you know. Thursday or Friday. We'll yeah. Be here. Uh, so, yeah, we expect to be back here next week on some day um, mm-hmm. at some time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is not same bat time, same bat channel, man. Like, <laughs> no, it's definitely not. <laughs> our, our little shoestring podcast here. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, you can follow <laughs> us. You can Im- improve that shoestring issue potentially by following us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, um, like and comment and subscribe and leave reviews. And you can always email me, michael at thelibertymike.com. That doesn't get us any money or anything. Actually, none of this gets us any money. No. <laughs> but um, but I appreciate it. No, that makes us feel better. And I'll, I'll read your email. And most of the time, I'll even respond. Yeah, that's, that's something. Most of the time. I try. Um, And uh, yeah, but we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm -hmm.